there, I'm Kate. Um, welcome to Music Production Nerds. Today we're going to cover how to make vocal chops from scratch or from a sample. I'm personally a huge fan of vocal chops and I use them a lot in personal and professional production as they really add a unique flavor to any mix. Chops make it really easy, at least for me, to get excited about creating since they have such a fresh sound, there's so much flexibility, and it can be super helpful if you ever have production or writer's block. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. Okay, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is find some vocals to chop up. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this. You could get a sample pack. Um, online, there's a lot of great options, especially in electronic and pop genres, but those can also rack up really quickly. A lot of times what I like to do is wait a month, see if I'm still thinking about it, and then I'll reconsider getting it. But there's also this great site that I highly recommend. It's called freesound.org, and it's basically any user can upload songs that they've made from home, and they're completely free. Um, to use so I just typed in vocal here and you can see there's over like 10,000 sounds so there's plenty to get from there but if you're ever in a pinch or if you just want something that's truly unique to you you can make your own and you really don't have to be a great singer um, to make vocal chops what I'll do is I'll show you that just with a few couple basic vowel sounds you can make great chops um, just by using your voice. And one of the best things about having a digital audio workstation like Ableton is you can easily manipulate these chops. So even if you're out of key or out of tune, you can fix that really quickly. So there's no excuse for not being able to make your own chops. All right, so here's our session. Um, I just went ahead and put down a basic drum loop here. just so you can get a reference of the tempo when I'm recording. Um, but basically, we're just gonna go with these three vowels. So an E, an A, and an O sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and record those for you, um, just so you can get an idea of what I exactly mean. And then we can go ahead and manipulate those sounds into vocal chops. All right, here's the O. All right, let's go ahead and do the ah. Okay, and then just the E sound. All right, so as you can see, just by manipulating the shape of um, your mouth, I really was only singing more or less the same note. Um, but your tone totally changes uh, based on whether you're making like an O or an A ah or an E sound, which is much more spread. Um, so just by small variants like that can be enough to make an interesting chop. So before we start arranging, what I want to do is take a look at each of these samples and take out the parts we don't want. One of the best parts about vocal chops is you're only really selecting the good parts. So I can just tell before even listening to these clips that, you know, my best parts are going to be where the waveform looks most consistent. So in this case, it's probably going to be somewhere around here. Um, usually, as you can see, I start to get a little more shaky towards the end and towards the beginning. I have this little breath here um, that we're not going to want if you want more of a, a full sound. But, you know, don't get me wrong, sometimes manipulating the sound of breathing can be really cool. And I actually use that technique in a bunch of my songs and productions. All right. And in this one, uh, again, I'm just going to stay away from the tail end here. Um, usually I would listen to each one. We can go ahead and do that. So that sound sounds a lot more consistent than the end of this clip, which sounds like this. A lot much more um, together, I would say. All right. And then for the E clip, this one was a lot more consistent, which is nice. So I'm just going to go ahead and get two measures of that as well and delete the rest. All right. And there we go. 
And now there's just one more step you need to take before starting to arrange. Um, I'm pretty sure these are all in tune, or more or less so. We can take a quick check by making sure they all sound good together. So they sound pretty nice together, but you know, let's say for whatever reason I brought in a sample and it just didn't sound right. It's probably out of tune in some way. Um, you know, it's really easy for samples to sound great on their own, but if they're just the slightest bit not in the key of what you've already made to your song, it can really mud up a mix and, you know, reduce the value of the sample itself. So what you can always do with any DAW, you should have a stock tuning plugin somewhere. Um, Ableton's is just called Tuner. Um, and you can see I was singing about a D there. All right, and then, you know, if you're an Ableton user, you can easily adjust the tuning of your sample and check back with the tuner. I just move this down about four semitones. So now, now I have a B flat instead of a D, but that's a quick way that you can check and make sure that everything is lining up the way you want it. It's really nice that DAWs like Ableton have all of this flexibility. Um, I, I really like how easy it is in this interface to just quickly manipulate things and record your own sounds from around your home and studio. And it's actually quite easy to make your own sample packs. And if you guys were interested in learning more about this, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up so we know to create that content in the future. All right, so let's get into arranging. So I usually have uh, three methods that I usually go to, um, but this, you know, these can all be adjusted according to preference. Um, but the first one I call guess and check, and it's pretty much the way it sounds. You just kind of, you know, randomly select where you want each of your samples and then check to make sure it sounds good. And if it doesn't, adjust as needed. Um, but one thing to note is that whenever I'm doing this, I am doing it somewhat randomly, but I'm always doing it on the grid. And basically what the grid does, it just ensures that you are placing any sample in the rhythm of the song. Without that, it's really hard to um, make something that sounds really cohesive. It's always helpful to think of vocal samples in the same way that you would think of like a drum sample or a synth sample or like a piano roll. So I'm gonna go ahead and break this down into um, the one eighth grid or divide it by eighth note, um, just so we have some more flexibility. But I'm just gonna go ahead and randomly grab one of our ooh samples uh, maybe I'll duplicate it right there, and then I'll take this one. All right, grab a section there, put it here on B2, why not? There we go, and then I'll take a little bit of our E as well, and we'll put that there, and uh, maybe I want that repeated four times, okay? And then for quick testing, you can always, in Ableton, you can loop it, it's control L, um, and it'll just uh, loop the desired section over and over. So let's go ahead and see what that sounds like. All right, sounds pretty cool to me. I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate it for our four bar loop, and this is what it would sound like with the drums. On to the next method. So the next method I really like um, to use on transitions or um, just to add some flavor to like a chorus or something of a, or a different part of a song that needs a little more interest. Um, and I, I call it give some air. Um, so let me go ahead and name that track accordingly. So you can take any of these samples, but I'm just gonna use the ooh, for example, all right? And let me go ahead and place it in the last measure here, just this little square, okay? So I have, I have this, and generally speaking, with this method, I like to use um, a 1 8 grid, a 1 16 grid, or even a 1 32nd grid. Um, I find that it works best on uh, or in spaces where um, it's, it's just a little faster. 
So I'll go ahead just for proof of concept, use the 1 32nd grid. But basically what you do with this method is you just remove every other um, beat or every other rectangle of the sample. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So I just went ahead and deleted every other rectangle, right? Um, and what's going to happen, and I'm just going to duplicate it um, just so you can hear it for a bit longer. What's going to happen is you get this really cool um, pulsating effect um, that really adds a lot of interest to any mix. And this is what it would sound like. Um, let me go ahead. Here we go. So it, it's very cool. Um, and I'll play it with the other method just so you can get a little more context. Um, but I, I, I love using Gibson Layer where I can. Um, so yeah, it just, it, it sits really nicely like on top of a mix just cause you know, you, you feel um, some space there. All right, and the final method that I'm gonna talk about is just repeat to the beat. It's kind of a combination of the first two. Um, it's just really focusing on using your vocal chops as if they were drums. So, you know, typically you would put like a snare drum on beats two and four. So maybe I'm gonna put a ah sample on beats two and four. All right, and then that would sound like this. So pretty plain, but then you can expand upon that. Think about how you would otherwise use a drum sample. You would probably have a kick in there on beats one and three. So I can go ahead and do that with one of my different samples. Put that on beats one and three, duplicate it out. So now it's a little more complex. Sounds like this. Gonna add a little reverb. And then maybe you even want to add in like a shaker placement and that would typically be on every other eighth note. So let's do that. We haven't used our ooh sample for this method. So let's go ahead and put that in there. All right, I'm just gonna duplicate that. Control D, there we go. All right. And all together, you should have just a very rhythmic based um, vocal chop that that sounds sounds pretty cool. Let's let's give it a listen. So as you can see, um, it it really adds a lot of life to a mix. And all you did was make an e on an u sound. It's really just about the manipulation itself, not necessarily having the greatest samples um, because with the right production techniques I'm a firm believer that you can make anything really sound great. It's also important to note that with any of these methods there's no set in stone rules. You don't have to stick to one way or another. That's what's so fun about creating music and having a specific voice is you know changing up those rules every once in a while. Um, and experimenting. So go ahead and spend some time and just play around um, with your chops, but maybe use some of these guidelines as the framework for what you're creating. The last thing I really wanna touch on is uh, the kinds of effects that I feel pair the best with vocal chops. Obviously, I'm a big fan of reverb. I've pretty much added that automatically to each uh, vocal chop track we've created. So this is with reverb, just the stock reverb, and without. So they're both cool in their own way, um, but I prefer the reverb sound. Um, and then another great way to fill out any vocal chop is just with a delay. I'm going to use um, my favorite delay that I just got um, by Sound Toys. Um, it's called Primal Tap. And we'll just go ahead and hear what the default setting um, adds to our little uh, guess and check vocal shock. Okay, there we go. So this is without the delay. Add the reverb. All right, and this is with it. So a little more interest. 
and you can even increase that feedback to get an even more complex sound. And then with the drums, very cool. Um, and then also, you know, I, I use Primal Tap and I love that plugin, but you can recreate a lot of those same effects with the stock plugins you already have. Um, Ableton has a stock plugin called Echo, which I love and has a lot of really funky presets that you should definitely um, play around with. Um, and then also be sure to uh, think about vocal chops in a similar way that you would a lead vocal by layering them and maybe even creating artificial harmonies. So like with my E track here, you know, I have my basic E, I went ahead and just duplicated it. So we have another one here, all right? But what I could do is I could easily um, go ahead and transpose it up 770 tones so it harmonizes with itself. And you can do that with any vocal chop and it, it makes for a really cool effect. So be sure to play around with pitch shifting as well. If you ever find yourself stuck, you can always use a sampler or a sequencer. We'll share a link to some of our favorites below for you guys to check out. All right, well, that's it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Um, please feel free to subscribe, like, and share, and visit our website, musicproductionnerds.com, if you'd like more music production tips, gear, and plug-in guides. See you next time, bye.